Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to review Avatar, the way of the border, the water, the way of the water. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second film in, in the Avatar franchise uh, from James Cameron. The first Avatar is still, right, the, the largest box office hit Ever. Now we go back to what, 2009 for 2011. that 2011. Is it 11? Yeah, I think it's 2011. And that was a long time yeah. ago. Like, I, I don't understand what took so long. The technology was there on the first movie. But, well, the t- technology has significantly improved. I think that's kind of a big point. So, uh, I think we all are kind of on the same page about this. Uh, I, we're not, I don't think we need to do like a spoiler-free versus spoiler-ridden version of let's, the review. No, let's just go full spoiler. Let's spoilers. just go for it. There isn't really much plot to talk about, to be honest with you. So if you saw the first movie, you know the plot of this movie. And so there's not really anything to spoil. Um, the, the good part of Avatar is, as everyone is saying, that the visuals are stunning. You know, they're gorgeous. Uh, you know, the environment on Pandora that Cameron created is beautiful. The ocean scenes. It might be the most visually pleasing movie I've ever seen. Visual is stunning. It is. I mean, one of the cool things about Cameron is that he's he's a director, but he's also an inventor. Yeah, and yeah. he in Avatar One, he I, I just saw a list of six to ten breakthroughs he made in Avatar One, and uh, Avatar Two was no less significant in terms of in terms of underwater performance capture. He basically reinvented cinematography yeah. underwater. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is not a- Aquaman on wires with a fan blowing his hair back. I mean, that, that's how they filmed Aquaman. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't filming in the water. And if you look at everybody you see in the movie underwater is really underwater. And I learned they are holding their breaths because because if they were, if bubbles, any bubbles apparently would interfere with the motion capture. I don't know about that, but they had to train to hold their breath and they were holding their breath for three minutes, four minutes. And I think the record, so one of the actors held her breath for like seven minutes, yeah, that's, longer that's than one of the impressive. stunt people. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Maybe they have crocodilian hemoglobin. <laughs> 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 and so, it, and it was beautiful. Te- mm, yeah. Technologically, technically, visually, this thing takes your, it took my breath away. Yeah. I would want, I could live in that, in that environment. It, it was just beautiful. And but, but as we know, as we know, yes. though, right? Like we have to, we have to get to the classic problem. The, the, the problem was, was that, from where I sat, was that the writing, it, it was a mild retread of the first movie. Yeah. I wouldn't mm-hmm. say it's a complete retread. It wasn't, but there was a the lot, a lot, were there. Yeah. a lot of similarities between, you know, the plot line, the overarching plot line of movie one and movie two. Um, but I have to say, I have to pull the old standard. The character development wasn't that good. And when you don't have good character development, you don't care as much or as much as you really should for a three hour movie, Where? Um, you know, a good sign that there's poor character development, one is that you don't care about what's going on. And two, you can't even identify the characters mm-hmm. by their names, mm-hmm. right? I don't like, like when you watch the very first Star Wars movie that came out in the late seventies and you knew every single character's name that had a name you knew. Mm-hmm. And you could give a description of their personality, yeah. what motivates them, what they would likely do in a scenario. Yeah, so I would, saying it the, writing wasn't good is actually soft peddling it a lot the characters were terrible one-dimensional tropes Mm -hmm. and the writing the story was simplistic uh and again one-dimensional unimaginative and a pretty much a complete retread of the first movie so you know it's it's almost you know if cameron set out to show what happens when you make a movie that's visually stunning but with a thin character and and plot line he did that's what he accomplished Mm -hmm. because think about it really think about it like are you anxious to see this movie again no i mean i I, if i don't see it again for another 10 years i mean i didn't see avatar after the saw it the first time you know yeah it was great but you know that was it i was i saw it i didn't feel the need to see it again um would you rather see a movie like avatar uh, visually stunning but thin characters and plots, or a, a, a low budget movie without really uh, you know, great visual effects or anything, but with 
great memorable characters. Like, like a Quentin a Tarantino good, movie. And a, yeah. and a great story. Of course you would go for the characters in the story every time. Here, here's a great example. Past 10 years, how many times have you talked about Avatar 1? Yeah, never. How many times? You forgot about it. Except it's, to mention the visuals. That's I, it. But even but even then, it's like it's like culture forgot about it. Yeah. It's you know it, it's and to me that's extremely telling. Now imagine if Star Wars: A New Hope seventy seven its release that movie was a cultural phenomenon. If there was never any other follow up in any way, we'd still be talking about that movie. <laughs> probably yeah. right. We probably would. It, but this movie, it's just so easily forgotten because there's, there's no, there's no, it doesn't enter the cultural zeitgeist. It's just not there. It's not part of our, yeah. of our day to day, week to week or anything. It's just something that was like an event, like a spectacle. And I, then that right. was it. I got and the that's sense though with this movie, about halfway through the movie, I'm like, this movie really is just the big beginning flick of a mar the marble of a much bigger plot line that's happening, right? And I'm just going to say it, you know, because like I said, we said spoilers. In the first movie, the humans were on Pandora because of unobtainium, the metal, the floating mm -hmm. metal, whatever. Like, I don't know exactly what the properties are supposed to be, but this zero gravity metal or I whatever. Didn't, that, that's not necessarily true. No? It's just really rare and, and Well, the, but there is metal. rocks floating on Pandora. But I don't think that's because of unobtainium. I think it's because it's a moon and there's another giant planet yeah, there. It's a anyway. strong magnetic field. It was more for like, the oh, ships, I, th I think. I thought the metal had, a, had those strong, problems. All right, so. but good point taken. The uh, the the second movie... Um, I'm sorry, you I got derailed for a second. <laughs> so in the, in the first movie... So it's, going after unobtainium. It, it, going after unobtainium. In the second movie... Um, they dropped a hint in the first movie that Earth was basically dying. Yeah. And the second movie here, they're going to take over Pandora to move humans to mm -hmm. Pandora as a new Earth. And, mm -hmm. and of course, that, that that chemical, the brain chemical of the sea life. Yeah, the brain that, juice that of, the, of the Pandora um, whales. Right. And they, well, they, they can't synthesize that in their, in their cloning labs. Their cloning yeah. is pretty advanced. They, they can't clone this, this, brain, uh, juice. this brain juice. Come yeah. on. So all Whatever. I get the sense that all of the Pandora movies to come are all going to basically be the Navi against an existential fight against humans mm -hmm. taking their planet from them. And this and it intrinsically bothers me because one... It's the retelling of the same story over yeah. and over again. We don't, you know, how many times are we going to see the big battleship come in shooting with the big weapons and, you know, the, the you know, mm -hmm. the hurrah, like kind of American military might vibe, all that. Like that's, we did it. Right. We did that. Yeah. Like you could, you could easily have the story be like internal to Pandora at this point. You know, like Jake, Jake and his family could have had conflict with other tribes or whatever. You know, they, they, they needed or anything else, anything else, right? Anything they other than to go. the same story. We learned nothing in this movie, three hours and there were an incredibly small amount of plot got done. It was like so inefficient in terms of moving the story forward or developing the characters. Well, I've seen 30 minute shows that accomplished more character development than plot wise. Right. This is like there was long sequences where nothing happens. Well, act two, act two wasn't was, really an act. Yeah, it, it was, was long and meandering. It, it felt it, like it never ended. It was a National Geographic yeah. show, the, the yeah. whole middle and, of the in movie. In fact, why did, you know, the thing is this movie could have been an hour and a half long. Right. Yeah. You could have gotten the story told in an hour and a half. And then Cameron could have produced a special like a fake, you know, documentary about Pandora to mm -hmm. show off the tech and the world and the sea creatures. If you really just wanted to spend time doing that, then do it. But don't make us sit through that it. for this absolutely razor thin uh, storyline. But also just the, the characters were. You know, not only did they not do anything for me, they they took me out of the movie. They were so you know full of tropes and cliches, and and like the the cardboard villain, you know, might as well have been twirling the mustache. Like really, in ten years or whatever, you couldn't come up with a slightly more interesting motivation uh, for these characters, or some depth, or some dilemma, or like at some point with a villain. You need to say, you know, he has a point. You know what I mean? Like you need yeah, to have the, that of moment course, a where you're like, villain, yeah. Ooh, what would I do if I were, I could kind of see it from their perspective. It's, um, you know, they're like just, Thanos. they're making the wrong choice. And Steve, on top but of that. But you could see it as opposed to just, ah, these, you know, the, the Navi don't matter. They're savages. Let's just kill them and take the brain juice or whatever. It's just, 
they they can't... brought back they brought back the villain from the first movie. Yeah. Who I loved, by the way. I thought he was a great villain, and and mm-hmm. you know, and I really did enjoy the first movie quite a bit. I, I thought it was fantastic. Um, but you know, okay, so what they do when they do this when 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 people who create stories and and make movies like yeah. this when they do something that so clearly obviates past actions like i'll give yeah. you an example in star wars when when movie um seven came out yeah and you find out about like the new empire yeah. and everything that happened in movies four five and six became irrelevant right. because it, they just kind of redid the enemy came yeah. back and nothing progressed and there was no movement like you know as if there aren't a, a billion stories to tell in that universe we're back where we were yeah, so we was, are back where we yeah. were when this movie starts humans are coming in they're being a problem. They're threatening the Navi. Or the third Alien movie. Yeah. Like, let's just undo all this stuff. Oh, from the previous that was movie. so Painful. frustrating. Right. The other thing is, like, remember Star Trek, the motion picture? What was that? Late 70s, yep. right? Yeah. Horrible movie. Horrible, horrible movie. Horrible movie. And I, oh, what I remember about the movie more than anything else is that really protracted scene with the Enterprise moving through the nebula. V'ger, into the V'ger, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like yeah. moving through the nebula. Isn't that beautiful? And then, we, you know, because we were young at that time and, and these kind of level of special effects were still new and we're like, And it was God. the first Star Trek movie. And Come it was, on. It was Star Trek, the, the special effects were beautiful and we were like, Damn, that was boring as hell. Yeah, and we, Aww, we, you know, with the music, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I'm like, you know, and then since then, I'm like, okay, so we kind of had to learn that you can't just throw in lots of special effects no. for their own sake. No, it's got to serve the story in some way. I guess why I thought we learned that lesson culturally over 40 years ago and here we are with the yeah. same exact but it's hard a good story thing. is hard it's hard it's wait well I, there is there is an explanation hard. and look and i really appreciate cameron and his body of work yeah i respect oh him i really like terminator he, 2 yeah. aliens of course i mean he's got he's got a catalog that you can't yeah you cannot argue cannot against he knows what he's doing and, and that's, that's why the he point. can be so indulgent he knows better he knows better this was a stroke of his ego. He mm-hmm. he he was, you know, doing what really pleased him. He wanted this movie to luxuriate in the beauty of of Pandora in a way that doesn't it's not good for storytelling. It's not good storytelling. And, and it's it's not good make, enough anymore. It'll make a, you know, billion and a half, two yeah. billion. It's gonna it's gonna rake in the dough. So it's like it is raking in the dough uh, already. Yeah. yeah. But but you know, it's interesting what you said, Steve. It's an hour and a half movie. I agree with you. Yeah. It, the movie would be much better if they edited it down. Somebody will do it, by the way. Yeah. Uh, edit it down to an hour and a half. You know, if you're going to take three hours, I better walk out of that theater knowing every mm-hmm. third level character in that movie. I should know everything about them for three hours. And they had characters that they, you know, like the princess. Mm-hmm. I get she was a secondary character. Right, the the daughter of the yeah. the chief of the water tribe. Yeah, you know they usually you don't really like do a deep dive on secondary and, and tertiary characters. I get it, but you had three hours. Mm-hmm. You could have had her have a half a dozen conversations with other characters to, for us to get to know her and her motivations. But you you better. say that you don't usually develop secondary characters, but good shows do, and yeah. I, that's one thing I notice about like a really good show is that even the most tangential characters are interesting. So we've reviewed Andor. We're going to be talking about it again. There's the um, the guard's mother, right? The guy, the guy who gets sent, who you know, gets fired and basically has to go home and live with his mother again. That The mother is, a, is the most tertiary character you could possibly imagine in the storyline of the show. And yet she was a fascinating character. Yeah. When she was on screen, you know, you were interested yeah. in what she was going to say and what she was going to do. She had personality. And she was Harry Potter's aunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you you know, you you that's the kind of thing you need to do when you're producing a big, you know, budget franchise production or movie, you know. And, and the the talent is there. While he was spending a decade perfecting the technology, have professional screenwriters up the the, the screenplay and a little how bit. How often do we say this? Like you know, the, there are it, brilliant. Screen- it's not like he didn't have the budget or the or the cachet or, or the access. power See, or I, the access. Yeah. What if he hooked up with Pixar to, to help with the story? <laughs> and yeah, but, you but I get the sense that he is one of those people that like I'm writing the story. It's my story, yeah. and I'm going to write it. You know. And, and, and well, that's the other problem is that you get somebody who is that powerful yeah. and it's like the Peter Jackson problem. It's like, how did the three Lord of the Rings movie, how were they so awesome and the Hobbit movies were so terrible? 
Yeah, I think I just get the feeling that Peter Jackson like no longer had the people around him that could tell him, you know, this sucks. We need to fix it. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was too big, you know, for his britches. Yeah, so like he, Lucas for the first for yeah. one, two, and three. Yeah, you, he didn't. You didn't have. There were no producers that were in there to say, "Come on, you can't do that." You know, like you yeah. need you need those other voices with projects this big when you're making a movie right. that costs three, four hundred million dollars to make, right? And this may be the most expensive movie ever made. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people when are you, saying. So we don't get it. This is what the yeah, three of us it. collectively don't understand is like, why? How could the movie suck so much? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I'll admit it. Like when I was watching it, it was gorgeous and I was enjoying it and I really liked the characters. It's I, worth seeing. Go see it. It's 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 stunning. And, and one I of had, my biggest I had that reaction. I also had the reaction of, what the hell is happening here? Like there's yeah. nothing going on on this screen. Yep. So I, I I I can't remember the character's name. Yeah. I love her. I love yeah. his wife. What's his wife? Terry. 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 Yeah. I love. They pushed her aside. That character. Yeah. I loved her in the first movie. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, she because she's she is badass. Badass. Yeah. And and Cameron has a history of having badass female oh, role sure. models. Yeah, Linda ha Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. I mean, and he, he, he she does was it. No, she he was does nothing it. like them in, in this movie. It was just like, where? She had the where one fight scene where she was, she was kicking ass. But Try I wanted to learn end. more about her. I wanted to learn more about the character. Because of the damn kids. The bro kids. Yeah, bro, bro, bro yeah. cuz. Oh, cause. God. <laughs> All right. So this is what we, this is what Cameron will probably hear this. Not from us, but from the collective. Um, more will, will more character development you know less luxuriating in pandora we get it it's beautiful we we like being there too but we want story to happen while we're there um mm -hmm. and i think in in movie three if we go into that movie and it's basically like let's fight the cowboy humans again if that's what's happening i'm really really yeah. going to be pissed off mm -hmm. like he's got to evolve the happen. situation he's got to evolve it I know it's like this is like the, at the same place that we were after Star Wars movie seven, where we were like, really, they're doing the retread where they're just shuffling around the scenes from the first trilogy. Got their plot but, wheel. But we were like, but there's two more movies. Let's see where they take it. Maybe they're going someplace more interesting. They're just setting the stage. And so we kind of can make that excuse now. But of course, we were massively disappointed with the with the final Star yeah. Wars trilogy. I'm prepared to be disappointed for the Avatar, whatever trilogy or how many movies is going to make uh but who knows maybe yeah. may, maybe the maybe the message will get through and he's like okay i guess we should you know use 0. 0.0001 percent of this budget for some actual screenwriters yeah. you know um to to make it good and not just be totally yeah. self-indulgent it's always a dis disappointment when and this goes for the star wars movies and other franchises yeah. as well you know you get all this money together and you have all you have you have tens probably ten thousand people worked on that movie from the yeah. from a you know special effects side yeah. you know you have all of these people putting all this manpower into it like how dare you yeah. how dare you make a half a billion dollar movie and not make the, the plot should and be half epic the screenplay the plot yeah. should be drop dead gorgeous like oh my god the script in this movie yeah, is so it's, freaking it's, awesome after a decade it's bulletproof you have but you <laughs> have no excuse because you know we now know that there are lots of talented writers out in the world because tv is so awesome and we've said we're spoiled now yeah we've raised the bar yeah. sorry too late yeah we now want plot and characters and if we don't right. get it we know there's no excuse you're right that's I, it i feel yeah. like he had this story already scripted out 10 years ago? 10 years ago. Maybe. It's possible. I mean, because it wasn't that much I work. Be right? it, didn't, it didn't take them that long. Um, all right. So, guys, if you enjoy this show, you can go to Alpha Quadrant and the number six dot com. We have a Patreon. If you'd like to support us and help us continue making these shows, you can also join that. And we're on YouTube, right? All of our, all of our shows are there. And we also turn this show into a podcast, which you can listen to. Um, at your leisure on any device that you like. So please go to uh, to alphaproject6.com to join us, and we'll see you next week.